Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we will begin. I thought I'd do a little update on the Watkin table saw that I uh, renovated a little while back. On, on the dust extraction, I got a little bit pissed off with having to change the throat plate. And that throat plate, it, it can't do angled cuts for obvious reasons. Which is a shame, so I had to keep changing the throat plates in and out in check square. to this ply version. Honestly, that does kind of get on your tits after a little bit because dust extraction isn't as good either because it's not sealed right to the blade. So I, I threw caution to win, thought, right, I've got to redo this. And this is what, I, what I'm doing here is pretty much exactly what I did with my old sight saw that, that Bosch 10XC sight saw you saw me using before I had this saw. And um, I used a hell of a lot of, you know, that uh, aluminium tape used for insulation, insulation board that you, you see me using underneath my track saw that same tape you don't need to buy that expensive stuff you just need to buy the, the cheap stuff you don't need to buy the stuff that handles ridiculous amounts of heat and stuff why i suggest this that tape over say gaffer tape when you're bad boy extractors an hvlp extractor and it's sucking air over time it's just like water it's going to find its way through and eventually the tape will start falling off gaffer tape will fall off far quicker with an hvlp extractor the aluminium tape sticks like it to a blanket and will last a hell of a lot longer the reason for using this material is because it's got a nice slick side to it so it's going to help with the flow airflow i'm just having a bit of a brain fart here working out which way i need to stick this to once it's stuck it's a bit of a prick to get back off the trouble with doing this with this saw is there really isn't many access points You're, you've got a small hole where the rise and fall slides left to right at the front of the saw and from the top saw that's really your best access so you need to plan ahead like if i stick this down here how am i going to get my hands in there to push that down hard enough for it to stick to that surface kind of thing probably gonna do this with my saws but that top on my saw is set perfectly parallel to the blade so i can't really mess around with that take it apart and kind of put it all together again and do all of this it, it, it doesn't work you just need to be a contortionist or plastic man to get this done really i feel whenever you're doing something like this and you want it to stay stuck it would it really helps to sort of decontaminate the area with some isopropanol basically pure alcohol give it a wipe disinfect it and um, all should be good. So here's me showing you what I mean and why it needed to be flexible. I mean, you possibly could build that all with tape, but tape kind of does, along with a fake leather, helps it fold a bit. Have some memory about it. So when you put it back to 90 degrees, put it back to 45 degrees, that kind of that fold stays there, so it um, keeps working. I think it was a magpie in a former life. I love shiny stuff. And I just, you know, just carried on with that tape. A bit leather, faux leather involved in it. To the point, found a couple of other holes I could try and seal. Remember that's brave knife that's going up and down. So yeah, it's, it's not ideal. It's not perfect, but it, it works. For shits and giggles, here's the old throat plate design, which worked well. Um, I'm just gonna show you what it's like with the uh, extractor running. Not a huge lot of airflow, is there? I'd really like to um, upgrade the motor, I think, of this extractor. Get more suck. Anybody out there that knows anything about upgrading the motor on a HPLP dust collecting system? Namely, if you upgrade the, the uh, motor, what effect does it have on the propeller that's inside? Can it be done? Recently, I've become a bit obsessed by trying to keep the dust down in the workshop. It's in the air, I mean. Those overhead extractors of box things are a waste of time. I've also made a slight change in the design of this throat plate. Those holes next to the saw in the original throat plate worked well, but they were alongside the blade and I don't feel they were as good as really where the dust is coming off that blade, which is towards the front. So I've just made my little change there and see if that's going to make any difference. And of course, let's have a look, see how it goes. In my opinion, it's doing a better job than the previous throat plate. I've centered those holes pretty much in line with the hose that's underneath the saw sucking the air down so I think that's working better in my opinion. I don't think those little groove cut slots in, in the throat plate made really any difference. 
That much does isn't a chain smash. I know, but I'd really like not see anything there. And of course, there's no test like like cutting off the edge of a board, is there? That shit goes everywhere and makes a hell of a mess. Doesn't matter what sort of dust extraction you have, it makes a hell of a mess. I was actually quite surprised by this. That ain't that bad. It has to be said though that that overhead extraction is probably doing most of the work. So I thought we should find out what it's like if we turn over the overhead dust extraction off and then run a board through that blade on the edge, take it off the edge, which makes the most mess. I can assure you though, this three horsepower saw, without that uh, top dust extraction on, it is quite like, quite literally like standing in front of a blizzard just getting blasted with sawdust in your boat race. It's all, uh, it's horrible. I don't like changing the blade to like a day day type blade because you can't have a cut up the overhead uh, extractor on it. Or using sleds. I mean, I look like a bit, someone's rolled me in flour to find a wet spot. It's that bad after, you know, for five minutes of ripping like that. I tried lots of different ways of trying to cut this slot out in the throat plate so I can get, so the blade can tilt left to right without having to change the throat plate. Tried smaller diameter blades raising it up through the throat plate. Basically me wanted to try and keep that throat plate in one piece and not sliding it across the blade so it cut, opened it up as into like a C shape. I think you understand what I mean. I tried everything and uh, in the end, remember me doing a review on these clamps but i've been using them for like the last four days solidly and i mean a lot of jigs involved I, they, as far as i'm concerned they're much better than the festival clamps i have and the festival clamps i've got now i just think are shite the holding power of those red clamps is phenomenal i wouldn't have got away with a cut like that with those festival clamps no way takes two hands to release them put it that way gotta say though when i was making that cut i was doing it in shallow passes one after the other going forward lifting the blade coming back over and then back down again and through it probably five times maybe and just a quick little milestone i hit this probably a month ago but never got this little silly award thingy nice milestone to uh, reach anyway thank you for watching hope you're all well and good be lucky <laughs>